G'day punters, welcome to a huge edition of All In. Cover a bit of Brisbane this week and uh, joined by none other than Dean Watling from the Barry Attendant. Dino, how are you, mate? Going well, Gannon. Going well. More rain about this week, but um, we've got some nice races. A couple of races po- uh, postponed Sorry, from Doombin last weekend, so we'll touch on that later. And some breaking news coming up by Louis. Yeah, that's right. Nice and summers, what do you got? Yeah, this news, so breaking, is it, then? So upsetting to some. Gano was so visibly upset, he actually quit the Zoom meeting and we had to do this for take two while he composed himself. So <laughs> we're back for another attempt here. Uh, it's all going well on a Monday. Yeah, good to see you guys. Um, yeah, news just coming through. By the time this comes out, everyone would have seen it anyway. But uh, Hitotsu sustained an injury to his suspensory branch in his near four leg and racing future is under doubt. They said that there's a chance that they will be rehabilitating him. If they do, he'd return to racing uh, in the autumn of 2023 if that rehabilitation was successful. But being a cult and a highly promising cult at that, there's a very good chance that uh, he'll be off to stud. So there's a chance we won't be seeing Hitotsu again. And as we just mentioned, it's really uh, a sad for racing, of course, because uh, losing high-class horses like this with a lot of upside and potential is uh, never good for the game. And so a big uh, like condolences to the connections and the, and the trainers, the team there, and, and everyone who uh, had some bets on it as well, including me. I was, I was really keen that it would be a big player uh, in the spring coming up, gents. It's absolutely gut-wrenching, isn't it? Like, you know, we, you got a horse that's dead set going to be an absolute superstar. Its derby win in Sydney was just disgustingly good considering the preparation at heart. It, his ratings were way over, like were well and truly better than every other horse, but that preparation to just come up and win like that was impressive. So yeah, really, really, really sad news there and uh, oof, tough to cop. And I, I know the owners have plenty, but tough to cop, do you know? Yeah, it probably just shows how um, insanely good we've had in horses such as Winx and Black Caviar who've won a million races in a row and not had one issue, one setback. It just shows how tough and levelling our sport can be. Having a cult like that, you'd probably be spending the money already for the spring, but um, it's levelled you out really nice. Um, I guess it's better than getting beaten on debut by 25 lengths, but I guess we'll move on, Gannon. We're going to move on. We'll talk about it. So we knew we, we, knew we had a pretty slow one. Uh, um, we didn't realise it was this slow. 20, 29 lengths last in a 1,400-metre maiden. I'm not sure where we go from there. I'm not sure how many um, – there's already been a gilding operation. I'm not sure um, if there's enough gear changes in the world to make up 24. They haven't seen the stewards report yet, though, so fingers crossed we've still got some hope. Please. Anyhow, boys, we move on. Such is life. That is racing. It's the game we have. Over to you, Lewis, for some uh, Saturday early thoughts. Yeah, I'll take it off your hands for 100 bucks, Gunnar. We can race it in the picnic circuit and have a lot of fun with it. Target, you know, Trangy oh. Cup, Warren Cup. Warren Twilight, <laughs> we can. All right. Yeah, big Saturday. Uh, obviously, didn't really get into much last Saturday in terms of Queensland racing with the abandonment there. Uh, the weather uh, up there is just insane. Uh, like it has been in Sydney, the rain just keeps tumbling down. So uh, even this Wednesday has been uh, more or less moved. So we're going to have a big 10 race card on Saturday at Eagle Farm. Speaking to a few people uh, today, they're hopeful that the rain will stop by Wednesday and that by Saturday, yeah, it'll definitely be a heavy track, but the thought process is uh, not how heavy it's going to be. It's just whether we can get through the meeting or not. So it's fingers crossed and a likely yes for the meeting at this stage. And let's hope so because there's 10 races on the card and uh, 10 really good races at that as well. We're going to have a look at some Saturday all-in plays. Uh, there's four races we're going to go through uh, here, Gano. And why don't we start with the Queensland Derby over the 2,400 metres. Let's take a look at the... All in futures market, thanks to Tab. Dark Destroy is the favourite at $4. Allegron at $4.50. Pinarello at $5. Caboche and Paternal at $9. And then Manazzi Southern Stock are the next at $15. It's 51 and longer the remainder outside of that with Ting Tong and Chudakaka and a few there at that price. So that's the uh, Tab All in market. Before we get to some thoughts, just taking a look at the kind of profile we've got here. Kukaracha won this last year and ran second in the Group 3 Rough Habit Plate. Speaking of that Group 3 Rough Habit Plate, that's kind of the form line that uh, three of the last five winners have come through. Kukaracha, uh, we had Dark Dream back in 2018, and we also had Eagle Way back in 2016. So if you are doing a bit of form, look through the Group 3 Rough Habit form lines, and a number of those at the top of the market are coming from that. Uh, but 
I'm tipping that maybe someone's going to bring up Allegra on here and it's not impossible to come through uh, the SA form line as well. Mr. Quickie and Ruthven did that in 2019 and 27 respectively. Dino, over to you after all that rambling on from me for the Queensland derby. Who's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm sticking with uh, Allegra on here. I know it cost me a case of beer um, last start, but we've gone to the well enough now. I've got a stick. I think Jockey just got caught napping, got shuffled back. Mine and your horses, Louis, were probably good things beat there. Dead and Jack won that. That's got to be the best form for this. Um, best figure was behind the horse we spoke about who's been likely retired, Hototsu, in that Sydney run on a heavy track. Um, we're going to get similar to that. My only concern is the kickback and if they can make ground at equal farm. We saw that was very tricky two weeks ago. Um, horses up on pace definitely dominated. So that's my concern, but I think we're getting a good enough price now to find out, and I'm, I'm sticking. Gannon? Love it. Yeah, look, hard to argue with you, mate. I thought from a, um, a value perspective, I don't mind Kabosh. Interesting sort of pathway. Look like the same owners as Kukarasha, um, same trainer, I and mean, I'm – Pretty sure was was Nash on or was J Mac on last year? Who knows? We'll, we'll say we'll su- just suggest J Mac here. J Mac goes on eight dollars. Um, had the older horses shot to bits at Scone uh, last start and just sort of found one a little, a little too good. But in saying that, it was eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred. Um, that was third up. So for mine, fourth up at the uh, what are we twenty four hundred meters. I think it's going to be ready to fire. It's a good, right combination. You're really not going to be far off the mark with the J-Mac Waller combination there. And the fact it didn't go the rough habit, I'm not too concerned about that. I will trust in Waller. He is a genius. So mine, Kabosh, $8. Yeah, beauty. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to go I'm Menazzi. Um, and this is coming through the Group 3 rough habit. It was caught three wide, no cover up on speed. It had to go two lengths quicker than class average to the 600 metres to try and find a position, which it never ended up getting. It was deep throughout. Um, the leader and the one that sat outside the lead, they both ran near last. And it was seriously not too far off Dark Destroyer in the end. I thought it was really, really game effort. Uh, with an easier run, maybe not as far back as Dark Destroyer was, but somewhere midfield with cover, I, I think it really goes close to winning that race. I'm quite surprised they've put up $15. Obviously, it relies on it drawing a better barrier here, but it'll be up on speed, uh, hopefully this time with cover. And at 15 bucks, yeah, Manazzi for mine, I thought it was really unlucky, as mentioned in that Group 3 rough habit. And that's the form line that I want to be with. So I'm going to stick with Manazzi at the $15. The second of... The races we're going to take a look at is the Kingsford Smith over the 1,300 metres. The tab, Kingsford Smith. Favourite is Paul Laley at $3.50. On Trivia at $6. Ellsberg, 11. Apache Chase, Law of Indices. And September Run, interestingly thrown in there, Gano. $13, 11, 11, and Isotoper at 15 bucks. Over to you, Gano. September Run. The wrong way. It's going the wrong way. I know. What are you doing? Why just run it in Adelaide? Fair income. Uh, I'll get on with it. Um, mate, I don't know how you split Paul Ely and Entrevier. Uh, at their value, I'll take Entrevier at $6. Um, absolute cracking run. Look, it's going to be a pretty similar setup to uh, last time they met. The only difference will probably be that there won't be as much misty rain and um, head noise for the jockeys as they go around. So, Making ground might be a little bit easier than what it was last time. We're up there for 10,000 days. So for mine, uh, Entrevier is a great bet at $6. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. And I think the key note, Gano, with that is it was probably a touch drier last time Palili and Entrevier met. I think we saw Palili fail um, in Sydney when it was those proper heavy tracks. So for mine, I think it should be flipped around, around the other way. As long as Entrevier draws a good gate, she's a uh, mare, sorry, who can sit a little bit closer, obviously not too close to the speed, but that midfield role, if she's one to two lengths off Polili, um, second up here will improve a stack off that first up run. Like you mentioned, best last six, last four, last two of that race. Um, no one missed it, and it was very tough to make ground. So for mine, I think they should be probably equal favourite. So for sure, I'm happy to take the $6. Law of Industry is one of yours, Gannon, has jumped out well. But um, behind that, it's a very tricky race to dissect we're looking for wet trackers and to mine there's not a lot that stand out so happy to take the six dollars sorry Louis, just quickly dino what do you make of uh law of indices and private eye just rocking up here first up what's what's the ga there i think that i think there must be targets because of the autumn carnival like they didn't hit their peaks 
Private Eye was sort of unlucky, had a couple of setbacks there. So I think they're peaking it up again. But I tried to find him. I looked at his recent trial. He's normally a gun trialer. And that latest trial was probably a bit on the, yeah, not sure. Yeah, I watched it as mind. well. The synthetic trial was, uh, was what you'd expect. But the one, the next one was average yeah. at best. Yeah. He loves the wet, which uh, which is a key here and fires fresh. But for mine off that trial, I'm um, just thinking Joe Pride maybe. He's going to get him peaking up for one run and not too worried about these. But Law of Industries, until that horse shows it for me, I've yeah. backed him too many times as well. In the he, but he could be a first up horse. That could be the, the key to him. So we, yeah, it's interesting here. I think uh, the Doom and 10,000 is the form line you want to be with. Vega 1 ran fourth in it before winning this race last year. You've got the Bostonian who was first up in the Doom and 10,000 and won. And then... Uh, impending ran second in the Dubin 10,000 back in 2018 before winning this race. So that's the form line you want to be with. If anyone wants to steer into Ellsberg, it comes through the all-age stakes. Malaguera uh, ran sixth in an all-age stakes and then won this race, but I don't think Ellsberg's anywhere near Malaguera with the greatest respect. So uh, I am going to make it the trifecta of people tipping on Trivier. I'm really keen on it. It was the fastest last 200 of that Dubin 10,000 by a good margin. It was seventh best of the day as well. Um, I do note the coming from back situation is always a hard one to put your hard earned on when you've got a horse that races like that. But draw depending, it probably could settle a little closer as well. I thought even though it was drawn wide and going to restrain anyway, they probably were length or two slow on it um, and just got back a bit further than uh, it needed to. If you wanted to back a little roughy, I don't mind Senor Fox, Senor A Fox. It's a $15 chance. I thought it was really good through the line in behind runners in the 10,000 as well. Um, and wouldn't be surprised to see it bob up somewhere around that second, third, fourth, or fifth at a bit of a price. So, Come on, Dino, is yeah. it Senor Fox, Dino? Yes, too many times we've been burned. It's a good first up horse, <laughs> and it's racing well, Louis. So the only issue for mine is it might need the old helicopter to go around the track a couple of times to dry it out. Yeah, that's not that's not wrong. That's not wrong. So, look, I'll stick with Intrivier then. Let's go all three of us. Yeah, now we're the talking. Trivier. Race number three we're going to focus on is the BRC size produce over the 1,400 metres. And just might have to refresh this market. It's come up a little weird here. $7 is definitely the favourite. No, it's now $6. So this has just changed a touch. Resonate is the favourite at $6. When I was doing this market only about 15 minutes or so, it was Swiss, Swiss Exile who was the favourite. It's now 7 bucks on the second line. Political debate, $8. Twin Stars, $11. Back Rower, Exo Lady and Green Shadows at $13. And then uh, West of Africa starts them at $15 and it's a bit longer. The rest, Back Rower, that reminds me of you, Dino. I mean, you're on the wing. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, righty, I'll come to you then, Back Rower. Too. Dino, who's your thoughts for the size produce? <laughs> well, give me at least 10 to get up from that knockdown, Louis. Um, interesting race. The top two in the market have met on debut before Resonator won that race over political debate. Um, I always get a little bit antsy coming into meetings where I like three or four back markers because, you know, um, you're relying on a lot of luck. But last start was absolutely outstanding by the Waller train, political debate, sectionals home were outstanding. If you didn't get a chance, punters, go back and watch the replay. You come from absolutely nowhere on the inside of part of the track and found the line brilliantly. My only knock is, is it... The run before a peak, um, that's my only query. It's going to get back again. So, But at $7, I think that's all. $6 now, I think that's a fair enough price to find out. I think it's the horse with upside and probably the JJ Atkins Akin, winner for mine. Um, I'm going to stick at the 6 bucks. Gannon? Um, boys, I'd add about, let's call it a lot of schooners. Do anyone remember the, um, the run of political debate? Doing 10,000 day? No, something. No, help me out. Oh, something, boys. Is that, not, is that not the one Dino just mentioned, or were you talking about Resonator? Oh, Resonator, my bad. Hey, I'll tell you what, though. I've, had, I've fallen asleep. I've had a bad day. I'll tell you what, You oh. sent $6 in you, Dino. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you got the odds wrong. Resonator is wrong. Buck. Political debate's eight bucks. Threw me off with the odds. My apologies. I've had absolute <laughs> me. Give it to me. Absolutely give it to me. I deserve it. Now, sorry, Dino, you put me to sleep. Brosnan, finally got up. Rosalind finally got up down at Flemington. It's like it's twenty six dollars. I know it's a horse Dino was a huge fan of. I've got no idea if it's going there, so we'll wait. But for mine, I want to see if that horse goes. I want to have a bit on. What do you reckon, boys? Anything? Something? Yeah, he's, I'm a, a, track, man. he's a dry track. Oh, I think so. What do you reckon? It's debut run on a wet track. 
surely it only compounded because it was 400 wide. It was nearly in the um, University of New South Wales going around the home turn. Yeah, but then I had a second run on the wet, wet and failed again. And then it's two dry runs. It should have won the size of Flemington behind, yeah. uh, I can't remember the horse. And then I had another run on the dry run, which was Saturday in it. Race well, but I don't know what the depth out of that race. So, Well, there we go, punters. I've got absolutely no idea on the size. I don't even know what we're talking about. Over to you, Lewis Willoughby. <laughs> Do you reckon though? Do you reckon it failed though, Dino, on that heavy nine in the English size? I didn't. We were watching it. I didn't think it was too bad. And then it was only beaten three and a half in the skyline behind Promito. And I, you know, I, I didn't think it was that bad, Brosnan, in the heavy. I think it's just interesting. Like the stable rarely travel their horses down south, so for it to travel down twice for two dry runs, I just think yeah. is a big. Point. But like you said, some days they can handle it. Some Randwick heavy horses don't handle them. They go to Eagle Farm and it's a, a different heavy and they can come out and bolt in. Um, so up in the air, early days for the horse, so not definitive. Fair enough. I'm with XO Lady at $13. Um, a good form line for this race is the Group 2 Champagne. I think XO Lady, if you watch the replay of that race, it was called something else this year. So just go back and check that. It was on 10,000 Day. It wasn't called the Champagne Classic. It was called something else. Anyway. Swiss Exile was the winner of the race, um, who is second favourite here at seven bucks. Exile Lady jumped better than it and led and then handed up to Swiss Exile, who ended up winning, and they just fought oh, out the finish. Louis, I sorry if- to interrupt you. I had the biggest, my biggest bet on the day on Exile Lady, and I was so flat. I really don't need you to bring it up again. Do you agree, Sorry. though? Had it not handed up, had it not handed up at what, are you, what was? What were you doing? Right. So, what were you doing? Every nothing went past anything. Or what were you doing? Sorry, it hurts. It was get, uh, sorry. Get a loan, get a loan out, and back it again. Thirteen bucks. I think they've learnt their lesson. It'll go forward. Um, and as we said, if it holds the lead, uh, oh, look, nothing's guaranteed. But God, I reckon it goes close to winning. Sweet, it's got to be XO Lady for mine at thirteen bucks. Um, you can back that each way. Even like I just. I feel I understand the political debate run was really good, Dino, 100%. Swiss Exile, I think obviously is a chance of winning again, but I just can't figure out the difference between the two. So for me, Exile Lady, sorry to bring up bad memories, Gano, a bit of head noise there. I do apologise. Uh, I'm sorry. clearly haven't set. had enough scooters by that time of the day because you shouldn't be remembering that race. I'm dead set suffering from that. And the best thing is a mate texts me, he goes, oh, I like his casual play. He goes, oh, I've got the winner in that race. And I was just like, mate. Not the time. Hell. Not the time. And apologies, punters. I got put off when Dino was talking. I didn't fall asleep. He's a genius. My young daughter's walked out in front of me and she's smiling and waving and I was not listening to a word Dino said. Apologies, right Dino. apologies yeah. punters. Very good. Right. Last of the races we're going to focus on here is the Doombin Cup. 2,100 metres the trip. This was supposed to be last week. It's now running this week. Uh, oh, by the way, the Roses is also being run this Saturday. Uh, and one of the other races we covered last week, if anyone's got a clue what that was, BRC Sprint. So that's also being run this Saturday. But for the Dubin Cup, 2100 Zaki's the dollar fifty favourite with Tab. Polly Gray at seven, Hueto or eleven, Kukaracha thirteen, Hungry Heart fifteen, Great House seventeen, and twenty six longer the rest. I'll go to you, you Gano first. Real simple. Play Polly Gray one by four. You'll make money. Um, we touched on it last week. It was two dollars now dollar eighty five ripped off a bit there. But I reckon if you took the two dollars, your ticket still stands. So uh, you'd still be happy. But I don't know. Just in case Zark is vulnerable, I doubt it. But one by four, you still make profit. Holy Gray. Uh, it's a watch and drink a beer race for mine. Um, hopefully Zaki wins. I think he will. Polly Gray, you can follow Gunnan in with a place bet for sure. But for mine, dollar fifty on a heavy twenty um, for a horse that's probably doesn't handle it the best. But yep, sit and watch. Splinters in mine, Louis. I'm glad you mentioned you're going to watch and drink a beer because I'm calling this my buy around of beer bet. I'm having ten bucks on Polly Gray, and if it lobs, I can go shout around of beers with it. So I think that's a great way to play it. Like, how can you touch Zaki to dollar and fifty cents with the greatest respect? It's an unreal horse. I'm not bagging the horse, but there's no way you touch a dollar fifty about that. Even to be fair, the seven bucks about Polly Gray, I would have loved a bit of double figure action. I think I could still be a bit short at sevens, but yeah, chuck a tenner on. If it goes by the wayside, then you've done a ten or whatever. If it wins, go shout around a beers for you and your mates at seven bucks and yip and yahoo for the rest of the afternoon. That's right, what though, Louis. Just quite speaking yeah. beers. Have you received any beers yet? 
No. Have beers haven't got past the border or something. What's going on? Guys, the Sahara Desert in this house, mate. I'm still waiting for him. All right, mate. You send us you send us those details, mate. We'll get them across you. Don't you worry about that. Right, boys. Before we wrap up, we're going to go our best all in plays of the week. And Louis Willoughby, kick us off, mate. What do you got? Um, look, it's the best of a, a bad bunch. I'm not entirely a hundred percent keen on on any of these just because of the track conditions and you know with the greatest effect. Brisbane isn't my forte. So don't you know take everything I'm saying in this entire segment with a grain of salt. I'll stick with Manazzi. I just thought it was really good. Three wide, no cover. If it finds a spot this time, uh, I think it's over the odds. And definitely in that race, I'd have a big watch on the market on Pinarello. It's first up from New Zealand. And um, I'd be following a really good market push if it came for that horse. But Manazzi for me. Outstanding. And uh, Dino, what do you got for us? Um, I'll go Kingsford Smith on Trevia. As long as it settles close enough, I think it can... Uh, launch past Pulele and the rest of them and win. So a little bit of New Zealand flavour, but on Trevier for mine. Love it, Dino. And I'm with you, mate. Once again, just copying your tips as usual. I can't get my own ideas, but basically let you do the form for me. So we go on Trevier, get home. Uh, it'll salute. We should be winning and we'll be winning. And you know what? If you like a bit of value, probably great, $1.85. Throw that in the double and off you go. Thanks, boys. And as don't forget, subscribe, comment, yeah, did give me a spray last week? Did anyone give me a spray last week? Or did my horse win? You made no, I think you're clean. I think you're good. Oh, you're beauty. All right, something. Uh, meeting may have been abandoned. Maybe the horse won. Who knows? Who cares? Thanks for watching. Until next week. Yeah.